G'day. It's raining right now here in not so sunny Bomaderry and uh, I decided to share with you something from a book that I was discussing with one of my subscribers not very long ago. It's a very drab looking book but uh, it's one of the treasures in my library. If I open it up, it's called Mathematics and the Imagination by Edward Kasner and James Newman. And uh, this is a 1940 Simon & Schuster production. Mathematics and the Imagination by Kasner and Newman. Why is it important? Well, it's not certain by any means, but it's quite likely that during the last 24 hours you have used Google to search for something on the internet. And the name Google actually is a misspelling of an original Google or Google and the Google is a number a very very large number and believe it or not it's this book that brought it to the market uh, Google was invented by a young boy which goes to show you don't have to be old to enjoy your mathematics and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that later but Kasner and uh, and Schuster, oh, not Kastner, Schuster, Kastner and Newman were very, very uh, accomplished mathematicians. And quite early in the book, I'm looking at page 18, they were talking about how they were discussing mathematics with kindergartners, children in kindergarten. And they asked them how many raindrops would fall on New York. Well, it was because they asked them while it was raining. And they're asked how many raindrops would fall on New York. This is on page 18. And the highest answer was 100. They'd never counted higher than 100. And what they meant to imply when they used that number was merely something very, very big. And these two mathematicians led these kindergarten children to understand numbers bigger than 100. Now, I won't read the next little bit about where they where that led, but they did appreciate their number substantially larger than 100. And they introduced them to this number of Google that had been invented by Kasner's nephew uh, not long before. So turning over a few pages, words of wisdom, this is on page 23, and you might have heard of this, um, but you've probably never actually heard the text or read the text and uh, I, I might actually put the text of it up on my Facebook page or on my website but here it is words of wisdom are spoken by children at least as often by scientists the name Google was invented by a child Dr Kasner's nine-year-old nephew who was asked to think up a name for a very big number namely one with a hundred zeros after it he was very certain that this number was not infinite and therefore equally certain that it had to have a name. At the same time that he suggested Google, he gave a name for a still larger number, Googleplex. The Googleplex is much larger than a Google, but is still finite, as the inventor of the name was quick to point out. It was first suggested that a Googleplex should be one followed by writing zeros until you got tired. This is a description of what would happen if one actually tried to write a Googleplex, but different people get tired at different times and it would never do to have Knerner, a better mathematician than Dr Einstein, simply because he had more endurance. The Googleplex then is a specific finite number with so many zeros after the one that the number of zeros is a Google. And the description goes on. But fascinating discussion. Uh, one of the quotations two pages earlier is that a very distinguished scientific publication recently came forth with the revelation that the number of snow crystals necessary to form the ice age was a billion to the billionth power. This is very startling and also very silly. A billion to the billionth power looks like this, which they show, 
a more reasonable estimate and a somewhat smaller number would be 10 to the power 30. And that obviously is vastly smaller than a Google. But there it is, a lovely publication talking about the origin of the word Google, uh, invented by a nine-year-old boy, Dr. Kasner's nephew. And I commend it to you. If you can track the book down, uh, I, I, I found, uh, this was in my, my local town library when I was a kid. And um, I didn't read it cover to cover, but I did read portions of it. And uh, in later years, uh, let's just say extended friends of the, f friends of the extended family uh, were able to supply me with a copy. Uh, mathematics and the imagination. The origin of Google, the number, and via that, Google the company. Thank you for watching.